Well, here we go again. I'm Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. We've got another round of severe storms coming to the Carolinas, but I will emphasize this. While this is a day we want you to stay weather aware on Friday, it is not going to be nearly as expansive or as widespread or as wet or as windy as the last system. If we didn't have the Tuesday system, it would be probably a pretty big deal. But if you're trying to compare the two, this is a lesser system. Doesn't mean there couldn't be some significant impacts there, but Tuesday was a much more widespread flood, wind, and severe weather risk. In fact, the flooding was record setting in many areas and the rainfall was unbelievable, four to seven inches. So let's get right to it. We're not gonna have a lot of details right now. It's more of a broader pattern setup because we're still, remember, this is going to be day three. Today's day one. Tomorrow's day two. Day three is Friday as far as severe weather outlooks. But we can kind of see the development here. The El Nino storm track is setting up. The problem is for us, the track has been just to our northwest. So that has allowed for warm, humid air to be pulled in from record warm water. Remember the summer? We're talking about 80, 90 degree, almost 100 degree water temperature over parts of Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic. Well, that water hasn't cooled off much because we've had a pretty warm winter. We haven't had the cold air yet to kind of like squash that warm water. So anytime we get the, the winter jet stream, which remember the winter jet stream, strongest winds of the year in the jet stream occur in the winter time. Typically they stay above our heads and they're not an issue. But if you get warm, humid air at the surface, which allows the surface to mix up to those heights, that's where you have problems. That's why we have severe weather in the spring. The problem lately is the winters have been so warm and mild that the spring is shifting now into February, January, December. We're not getting a winter. Um, so I know folks don't like cold and snowy weather and nobody wants that for three months, but we don't need to have warm, humid weather in the winter. That's not the time of year we're supposed to have it, especially this latitude with the jet stream. It causes big time severe weather issues. And that's the problem with these storms. So let's get into the outlooks here real quickly. We'll dive right into the severe weather outlook. So today, no severe weather expected. Tomorrow, you see the storm moves into the plains, the southern plains in the middle Mississippi River Valley. There's our risk there. We'll go to day three, and you can see the risk really enhances as it moves into the Carolinas and the southeast. We already have a low to medium risk for most of our area with a high risk again to the southeast. So again, our low, medium, high, extreme kind of storm prediction center setup kind of simplifies this. But for our area, especially in January, this is a medium to high risk around Charlotte and south and east. We can look at the probabilistic, which is the probabilities of seeing severe weather. And you can see um, the 5, the 15, and then this bright area is the 30% chance. So that's a 30% chance of seeing severe storms in that area in the brighter yellow. And that's a 15% chance in the lighter yellow. And the brown is a 5% chance. So that that is that's pretty high potential especially on day three you know today's day one tomorrow's day two day three i mentioned um so th that's a significant setup for this time of year in particular and again it's because of the warm humid air from the south now the details are going to be key how much of that warm humid air gets in here that's a big caveat so let's get into that all right let's jump right into the future cast this is 11 a.m today we'll go through today no major issues we'll go into tomorrow so tomorrow morning, we get into the wee hours of the morning. We'll go into Friday morning. So this is 4 a.m. Friday morning. So today and tomorrow, no issues. I'm just fast forwarding to when the action's going to happen here. Um, cause, so there's our system. It's 4 o'clock Friday morning. You can see very similar with a big low pressure center sitting over here, cold front down here, and a warm front. But what's interesting is there might be a line ahead of the front. So I expect this to be the cold front right here, back here, but maybe like almost like dry line or some kind of prefrontal trough tries to develop ahead of it. We'll have to see if that, that gets overtaken by the front, which it looks like it does, but almost looks like a double-barreled uh, low pressure system. So this is 7 a.m. Friday. You can kind of see the warm fronts in here moving north, and that's key because you get into this warm, humid air ahead of the front. That's where our severe weather risk is going to be high. So look at the warm front coming north. By 11 a.m., um, winds are starting to shift to the southeast. There will be storms along the front, and sometimes they can be severe as well. We'll go to noon. We start to see rain moving in. So here's the warm front. We'll go to one, two o'clock. So this is definitely going to be more of an afternoon and evening setup for Friday. Depending on the position of the warm front, um, we could see it start early afternoon, but maybe mid afternoon. But you could see the warm fronts getting already, already to our north. So the warm front to me is somewhere right in there, maybe. And we're getting southerly winds. So any of these storms could be rotational. We'll have to see. That's the big caveat. I don't know if we're going to see discrete cells, but if that setup unfolds, we will. 
And then you have the main cold front with the line of strong storms. We'll go into the afternoon and then by evening. So this looks to be a, like a late afternoon, early evening now. But remember, we've still got a couple days. The timing of this can change all the time. People always say, hey, yesterday it was supposed to arrive this time. And today, that's what happens in storm systems. They slow down and speed up. Just think about you putting in the GPS information to drive on an eight-hour trip. The time you put in at the start of the trip is not the time you're going to get there because you're going to stop for gas. You're going to stop for food. You're going to stop for bathroom. There's going to be traffic. There's going to be weather. It's going to slow up. And so the time changes. It's our estimate based on everything staying the same right now, which we know probably not going to happen. So we have to keep an eye on the setup. Now, one of the things I'm going to look at is the instability. So surface based cape. Uh, I'm going to quickly load this up and kind of see how much of this cape or fuel for storms will get up here. All right. So here we're going to look at thunderstorm fuel. And one thing I'll tell you this time of year, because we have so much wind energy, we call it wind shear that you only need tiny bits of thunderstorm fuel. In the summer, it's the opposite. You got a ton of thunderstorm fuel and just a little bit of shear, you get issues. This time of year, it's what we call high shear, low cape, which means you have so much wind energy. If you get just 100 joules per kilogram of cape or thunderstorm fuel, things will go crazy. So you see it coming north. So this is early on Friday morning, uh, 2 a.m. or to 3 p.m., 4 p.m., we get into the afternoon hours, not a lot here, but look how close it is. We get into the evening hours and some of this tries to surge up and you're probably saying, but that doesn't look too bad, Brad. Um, for this time of year, yeah, with the jet stream, that's pretty potent. So the fact that we have anything across this area is a little bit of a concern. If I look at the actual amounts of Cape, you could see very little in here, but if this should surge north more, our severe risk, risk could move up. And just to put this in perspective, Yesterday, we had several tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings with about the same or less thunderstorm fuel. So it only takes a little, and that's why we're watching Friday carefully, and it's a day we want you to stay weather aware. Of course, we'll have much more details, timing, impacts. That will all come into focus. Remember, forecasts start as a funnel. They start very broad, and as we get closer to the day and the time, the funnel gets smaller at the end, and you get more precise, more accurate, and more detailed information. So right now, it's a day we want you to stay weather aware. We could see another round of severe storms afternoon and evening kind of time frame right now. And I'll be posting updates today, tomorrow. And of course, we'll have you covered Friday as we get ready for round two of severe storms here in January.